Hey everyone, welcome and thank you for joining us for another great video here on Chuckwagon MTG. Today we've got a deck tech, uh, we've got some pack openings, we got some uh, giveaway we're doing, a whole bunch of fun stuff. We're going to start off with the deck tech, uh, that's what we got here. Now originally this was based off of the uh, the red deck wins, the mono red uh, that runs a bunch of little creatures and then the Cavalcade of Calamities uh, that essentially it's an enchantment that whenever a creature you control with power one or less attacks, you ping your opponent. Um, I was going to pair it with uh, one of the new cards from Eldraine, uh, Revenge of Ravens, which is a four drop enchantment that anytime a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, they lose a life and you gain a life. Um... And I started messing with the deck, and it just, it did not flow well. But then I kind of started seeing some other options, and we were actually to make, we were able to make a mono black version of the deck. Now, it doesn't function exactly like red deck wins, um, but it's it can be very aggressive in early game, it's decent mid game, and it can also win late game. So... With that in mind, and considering what's in the deck, we went and ahead and called this black deck wins. Uh, so let's go ahead and flip over here, and we'll check out what's in the deck. Uh, first of all, we have four copies of Cauldron Familiar, and it is a 1-1 one, one cat for one black mana. That when it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life, and then you can also sacrifice a food token and return it from your graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, we also have four copies of Knight of the Ebon Legion, uh, which is probably the most expensive card in the deck. Um, it's a very good card, so one drop, one, two. You can pay three uh, to give it plus three, plus three, and death touch. And then at the beginning of your end step, if any player lost four more life, it gets a plus one, plus one counter put on it. So um, that's early game swing. That and the cat um, usually go in for a little bit of damage before they can really set up. Um, and then our next one drop is we have Bone Splinters. Uh, you have to sacrifice a creature to cast it, and then you destroy target creature. This works very well uh, with the Cauldron Familiar because you can sack it and then... You know, at some point in time, we're going to get a food token, so we can just bring the cat right back, get the end of the battlefield trigger again, um, and it's just all sorts of fun. Next, we have four copies of Orzov Enforcer. Uh, it's a 1-2 human rogue for a generic and a black. Um, it does have death touch, and it has afterlife of one, so you get another creature out of it. Another one that works well with Bone Splinters, uh, simply because it replaces itself, and it keeps a lot of their stuff at bay, because unless they have First Strike, whatever they swing at us with, it's going to die. That's just how it is. So, um, And then next, here's where this deck gets interesting. We have four copies of Bloodthirsty Aerialist. Uh, it's a 2-3 flying vampire rogue for two black and one generic and anytime you gain life it gets a plus one plus one counter um so we've got food tokens in this those gain you life and so that can work in a pinch um but then we also have go back to that cauldron of familiar that unless they exile it we're going to keep bringing back we're going to cast it and then we're going to sacrifice food tokens bring it back so every time you do that uh this cat is helping your bird get a little bit bigger uh, we then have four copies of Murderous Rider. I am in love with this card. Um, I thought it was good when I first saw it spoiled, but actually playing with it, this card is an absolute beast. Um, it's one of the adventure cards. So as a creature, it's a 2-3 for one generic and two black. Uh, it's a zombie knight that has lifelink, and when it dies, it goes in the bottom of your library. It's adventure portion is called swift end it's the same cost two black and a generic um and it's an instant destroy target creature or planeswalker and you lose two life honestly we gain enough life in this deck where we really don't care about that two life um hell you could put a four life cost on that and i'd probably still play it in this deck um but this is this is really good um, it's removal that you can get a creature out of, and the lifelink will, will bring us back uh, if we're down any, and it'll trigger our bird as well. Uh, the next one we have, we have four copies 
of Foreboding Fruit, uh, which is a sorcery for two generic and one black. Target player draws two cards, loses two life, and then if you cast it with at least three black mana, you get a food token. So um, off of this, essentially, we're going to be drawing uh, three cards, or excuse me, drawing two cards, and since it's a mono black deck, we're always going to be spending three black mana on it. Um, so you're going to get that food token, which is going to help bring our cat back from the graveyard. Now, uh, we also have four copies of Dread Presence. This is more of um, small spot removal, but it's really good for mid to late game. Uh, essentially, it is a 3-3 Nightmare for three generic and one black. And then whenever a swamp enters the battlefield, you can choose one of these two options. You either draw a card and lose a life, or it deals two damage to any target and then you gain two life. Once again, we're using this two damage maybe to remove something or just to ping our opponent. We gain two life, and then you got it. Bloodthirsty Aerialist gets bigger. Um, this is just... I wasn't a huge fan of this card. I'm still not, but in this deck, it really, really shines. So my respect for it does go up a little bit. Uh, next, we have four copies of Revenge of Ravens. This card is gross. This card is absolutely gross. It's an enchantment uh, for three generic and one black. I think we already went over this in the beginning of the video, but I'm going to still say it. Whenever a creature attacks you or opponent you control, or excuse me, you or a planeswalker you control, uh, that creature's controller loses a life and you gain a life. So essentially this is going to want to keep them from attacking. Now if they insist, um, it has to be at least a two power creature or higher for it to actually have any damage that's noticed. Because if they swing with one woods, uh, which a perfect example was is the red deck wins that uses the Cavalcade of Calamities, um, while they're going to be swinging with a bunch of one ones, the life we're gaining is essentially going to negate all those Cavalcade of Calamity triggers, um, and then our birds get bigger. So um, that seems to be a, a real big part of this is that the Bloodthirsty Aerialist just gets ridiculous so quick. Um, and then for the last creature in this deck, we have two copies of Sir Conrad the Grim. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. Weird way of spelling, sir, but whatever. Um, so this guy's got a whole bunch of text. Uh, it's a 5-4 legendary human knight for three generic and two black. And whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into the graveyard from anywhere aside from the battlefield, or a creature card leaves your graveyard, Sir Conrad the Grim deals one damage to each opponent. And then we can pay a uh, generic and a black, and then each player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. This card, once it gets out, if they don't deal with it, is just ridiculous, because um, it's going to trigger... If nothing else, we can just pay the two and start milling stuff. Eventually, we're going hit, to be hitting creatures, and that's going to have us has them lose life. Um, and then, like with the Orsov Enforcer, I mean, essentially, this guy, he, this card was made specifically for jump blocking. So, um, this is going to trigger um, both on the regular card and the token when they leave. And then, Cauldron Familiar. You throw this out, he pumps our bird up, you block with him, he dies, Sir Triggers. And then you sacrifice the food token, the cat comes back, he came out of your graveyard, so he triggers again. Um, it's just, it's value, uh, this stuff all the way around. Now, we don't have a sideboard for this yet, because I really haven't played it outside of Best of One. Um, if I decide to take it any further, we'll definitely put an update to that. Um, now let's get on with our land. Uh, and here's... Something I just love about this deck is normally in black, you really don't have a whole lot of card draw. But if you do, it usually comes with a rather steep penalty generally involving your life. So we've got four copies of Castle Lockthwain. Yeah, Lockthwain. Um, so it's a land, when it enters the battlefield, it's tapped unless you control a swamp. Usually isn't an issue. Um, it taps for one black mana, or you can pay one and two black, tap it, and then you draw a card and then you lose life equal to the number of cards in your hand. Um, what I have found with this particular deck is usually by turn four or five, uh, which is turn five is, I mean, you can cast it on turn four, but you'd be really hard up to do that. Um, 
by the time you're going to use this, you generally don't have any cards uh, in hand, or you might have one, but your hand size is generally pretty small. Um, so this card draw is absolutely amazing. And we have four copies of Witch's Cottage. Um, now this one comes into the battlefield tapped unless you control three or more swamps, not just one. Um, and then when it enters the battlefield untapped, you can take a creature from your graveyard, put it on top of your library. Um, now one of the things I love about this card is that if we happen to have our Dread Presence out, you can actually lay, play your Witch's Cottage. Um, if you've got the swamps, then it comes in untapped, so we can take one of our creatures that's in our graveyard, put it on top of our library, and then technically this is a swamp, so it does trigger Dread Presence. We can then, um, you know, do the two damage and two life, or we can draw a card and lose a life, so we can draw the card, the creature that we just put back on top of our library. Um, I'm sure... There are tweaks to this deck that can be made. I haven't found him yet, but uh, this is just this is a deck that I am loving the heck out of right now. It has a rather decent win rate, um, especially considering the decks I normally make. <laughs> so um, this thing is just this is just tons of fun, tons of fun, tons of fun. Um, and it's it's cheap. I mean, relatively cheap. This is a standard playable deck. The Knight of the Ebon Legion is going to be your most expensive card. I think that's sitting around eight or nine dollars right now. I could be wrong on that price, but um, the rest of this stuff is is all cheap. Um, I don't know what Castle Lockthwain is currently at, um, but I don't see it being too much. Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and put the, the deck list up with the price and all that one last time so you can uh, see it. And then we're going to go ahead and swap over here... Uh, and uh and get a game or two in let you see uh how this deck plays all righty here uh so we're gonna go to standard ranked black deck wins play all right let's see what we can get going here um hopefully we don't have uh you know any slow players or people that like to rope us uh for some reason it has gotten really bad at least on my end uh the last week or so um, I've had more people roping out uh, than I care to admit to. So, uh, all right, this is a decent opening hand. We'll go ahead and take it. There we go. All right. That's always fun. When they play a land tap that first turn. I mean, you know, we're only getting in for one, but... I'm fine with that. Oh, uh, we're playing elementals. That's what it's looking like. Um, oh, well, yeah, let's go ahead and get in for the extra. Even better, even better. Now, what three drop? There we go. That's it. Okay, so we're not even going to screw around here. We're just going to kill that off the bat, play a swamp, and then we're going to swing with our guy. And the next turn, we can drop the Dread Presence uh, and a Swamp. Yeah, we'll go ahead and get rid of the Flyer. It'll be great. Um, so we're going to drop Dread Presence. Play a Swamp. Uh, we'll go ahead and kill that. And then we're going to swing. I don't know if he'll block. Okay. Um, I say it's... What do we got? Oh, the, there is that one, uh, there is a black pump spell for one, I believe. Come on, come on, come on. All right, come on. Here we go. Another one? Interesting. All right, so we're going to play an aerialist. 
go ahead and do that. And now we're going to go ahead and swing. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, folks. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll just we'll leave it like that. And then uh, we'll bring out the murderous rider. And hopefully we can uh, start making our bloodthirsty aerialist, aerialist ridiculously big. Ooh, that's a big one. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Luckily, I have plenty more where that came from. So we play him. We'll play this one too. And then we'll do that. Uh, let's kill that. There we go. Our birds got bigger. All right, so you, you get an idea for for how the deck works, um, and you know if you can, like I say, if you get that cat out, um, it just the birds get ridiculous quick. So, um, anyways, that's a a quick sampling of. Ooh, what did we get? Oh, oh well. Um, so that's a, a quick sample of of what the deck can do. Um, and, and don't forget. Uh, I know people in the past have asked that we uh, post deck lists. Um, and while we don't post the actual deck list in the comment section anymore or in the description, we do have a link uh, to our tapped out account, which ev any deck we've ever done, I'm pretty, there might be one or two that isn't in there, but pretty much every deck uh, is put in there as well. So if you ever want to see the actual list, um, you can follow that link, go to our tapped out page. Um, if you want to upvote our decks, awesome. If not, whatever, it's it's there so y'all can can check out the deck lists. Um, and then if you want to leave comments or something, that way we can tell uh, what might need to be done to the deck. We're always open to that. So anyways, what are we doing next? Next, oh yeah, tell you what, uh, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to shut this down here. Um... Make sure not, we're just going to go ahead and I'm going to bring this over there. There we go. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and shut down Arena. So that's not running the background. All right. So first off is our giveaway. Um, now, oops, I almost forgot to start up this other camera. Now, um, last week's video, we didn't get like a whole lot of comments, so... Our wheel is rather sparse this week, uh, so those who are on it, you get a much better chance of winning. We're going to run over to random.org. We're going to roll, not on this, we're going to roll some dice, but it's got to be on that page. We're going to roll two six-sided dice, whatever comes up, that's what we're going to click. we got four, so we're going to click the wheel four times, and then whoever comes up, this is going to be your pack. You get all the, the rares and mythics and foils and all the good stuff out of it. So, anyways, good luck to everyone that's involved. we got once, twice... Thrice and four. Oh, my speakers are on. Sorry, folks. And it looks like Woot, Woot MTG, you are the winner of this pack. So now we're going to go ahead and, oops, wrong one. Uh, we're going to flip over to cameras here. There we go. You have a Throne of Eldraine pack that we're going to open for you. Um, let's go ahead and see what kind of good stuff we're going to get. Okay, so this is one of them that the... Okay, so we go like that. One, two, three. Uh, okay. Sorry about that. It's It was all mixed up. So let's go ahead and just kind of thumb through here real quick, see if we got anything good. All right, so there's our thing. Land. Uh, Foulmire Knight. We got a Groomly the Generous. Uh, Embereth Shield Breaker, and then your rare is Clackbridge Troll. So, let me tell you how much I love anything that creates goat tokens. And you know what this thing does? It creates goat tokens. Yeah, it creates goat tokens. I love it. Absolutely love it. Alright, well, there's your card there. Ooh, I'm going to go ahead and throw it in a sleeve. And then I'm going to write on it the sleeve, not the card. 
And this is Woot and uh, what is the date that this is going to be airing? I don't even know. So I'll just put October 7th. That'll give you plenty of time. That gives you a couple extra days because I'm pretty sure this is going up before the 7th. Anyways, that's what you got there, Woot. All right. Congratulations. And then, um, where'd they go? Oh, I must have put them away. So, oh, no, I didn't. Well, I mean, I did, but I didn't. I got, they got put on top of the box. Um, I just, I happen to have um, packs. Now, so, like, at the beginning of every month when our, our patrons come through, um, the payments come through, we set aside, I almost knocked over, like, two or three hundred cards. That would have been bad. Anyways, we set aside um, the packs for everyone. That way we know for sure we're going to have them. Um, unless we have to order them and then, you know, we put them aside and we get them. Anyways, so we cracked open our box of signed packs, and this is what we had left. So, we're going to crack these packs and put them in to our Patreon Build-A-Pack box. Essentially, everything in these packs is going to go in there, into the box. Um, uh, foils, rares, mythics, whatever. It will all go into the box. And we've got lots of new patrons this month, so thank you very much. Um, let's see, are we going to... Okay, we got to do this again. So, it's... There's that, and then this should be the land. Then this is going to be rare, and then one, two, three. I did that off camera. Sorry, folks. I know better than that. We're going to go ahead and thumb through this, see if we got any of the adventure alternate art. Is it? Okay, no. Uh, all right, we got a Wander Mare. We got a Sage of the Falls, a uh, Ventress Paladin, and... Did I? I did. I, I don't know what I was doing. I'm like, we're short a card. Hushbringer. Okay, I cannot be the only one that this art creeps me out. I can't be. This is just, this is some creepy art right here. But anyways, that goes there. That's going into the box. Let's see what we get in our next pack. Alrighty. Alright, so, token, land, rare, one, or no, one, two, and three. I'm trying to do this on camera and I keep forgetting. Alright, so we got that, that, that. Which, by the way, originally, this was in the deck tech you just watched. Um, we did it to uh, help make um, food tokens for our cats. But we found, more often than not, um, there were just much better things to spend mana on than equipping this to something. So it got taken out. But just something to know that if you go in, this might be something you might want to try out. I don't know. All right. We got a Mysterious Pathlighter, Rampart Smasher, uh, Edgewald, Edgewall Innkeeper, and then a Giant Killer. That's not a bad rare. Next pack. You know, I also think it's funny how some of them, some of the boxes are, or some of the packs are backwards cards-wise, and some aren't. So we got that, and then we got the rare. So this, or that should be stuff, words. I'm mixing the cards up. There we go. Uh... Witch Stalker. I don't, no, I'm not. We don't read off those cards. Come on, Chuck. I swear I know what I'm doing. All right. We got Frogify. We got Bog Naughty. We got Sorcerer's Broom. And a Storm Fist Crusader. Uh, that was actually my promo at one of my pre releases. All right. Good lord. That pack is giving me some issues. All right, so we got token, we got land, we got rare, we got one, two, three. Does that mean we got a foil? I think that means we got a foil. We got a joust. All right, we did Kenrith transformation, inspiring veteran, and a castle, castle, Garnbrig. And our foil is a, ooh, foil venerable knight. Rock on. Well, that's it right there. 
all these cards are going to go into the Patreon build the pack box. I don't think we got any crazy hits, um, but at least now there's some Eldraine in there. And this also kind of, I mean, in a way, it's kind of good for the patrons because this is going into the build the pack box. These weren't that great, so essentially these packs were taken out of the pool of the cards that of the packs that they're going to be opening. So uh, it's win win, I think. I really, I really think it is. So uh, I think that about Dover does it. Um, if you like what you saw here today, do us a huge favor, click the like button, hit subscribe, hit the bell notification button so you can tell we're coming out with new stuff, and then share this with your friends, your family, your loved ones, and your pets. Everyone could use a little more magic in their lives. Once again, thank you very much for watching. As always, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the social medias, Chuckwagon MTG.